So I would like to present to you the, the, the improved taxonomy architecture, architecture under the DPM refit, because we know that DPM refit introduced many new features. So some of the features will impact the current taxonomy architecture. So I will list to you to use the details regarding the introduced in the taxonomy architecture. It is the objective. Of course, it is to comply with the new requirements under the DPM refit to introduce some, um, some new features and to address some inefficiencies that exist in the current uh, DPM taxonomy architecture. By taking this chance, we would like also to simplify the structure by uh, uh, removing some of the artifacts that uh, we judged not, ne not necessary and uh, sometimes they are re just redundant, not useful for the exchange date. So we will try to simplify the architecture by removing some files in the different folders. And the third objective is to try to, to converge uh, the taxonomy architecture uh, of the EBA and the EO bar, uh, they are globally the same, but still there are some uh, cus cus uh, customizations from the different parties along the time because it has been uh, not changed since a very long time, several years already. And most importantly is the taxonomy that produce under this new taxonomy architecture of course, we are, it will still follow the XVR international standards and the use of functionalities provided by this standard. So there's no, there's no impact on the XVR standardizations. Nothing will be updated from themselves. We we'll just uh, introduce some features that will still in the scope of XVR international specifications. Uh, so this is the current XVR taxonomy architecture as a glossary part, so dictionary part from our from XBIO terms. Uh, so in the dictionary glossary part, you see there are three parts, dimension, domain, and metric. So we just list the different items under different folders, and there is no versioning on this uh, on this part. But we know that in the DPM refit, uh, now we introduce the versioning of the of the of the dimensions domain and the metric and the hierarchies so this will lead to some changes in the taxonomy architecture but not too many if i mean the changes is quite limited so i am trying to uh, uh, show you by uh, cross out the not useful uh, fires and also uh, highlight the new things in the new folders and new files in an orange color. Uh, so you see that we have, uh, we want to remove the code labels, uh, which just uh, links item to the, to the ID element in the DPM graphic. This is only for the information and not useful for the data exchange. So we would like to remove them. Uh, we also removed uh, the, um, for example, some the presentation and the calcu calculation link basis under the of hierarchies between the members because they are just not useful. Presentation link base it has exactly the same same you know structure as the definition link base. Okay, they have same parent child relationship. I mean the parent child relation is same, but it is different. It is defined by different role in definition, but in the general they are the same. The structure is the same. Um, for the calculation link base, uh, already it is totally replaced by by the Vadish rules, and the row is just a custom rows. We cannot really execute all this calculation uh, calculation link base under the under the the uh, XVR process engine. So we will try to remove these two, these files. And importantly, uh, we have added two folders here with the notional date of publication. This is two versioning of it's, the objective is to version the hierarchies and the extensible enumeration items. Uh, because we know that with the DPM refit now, uh, the same hierarchy, they can change the members. Uh, from one release to another. So we would like to keep the same hierarchy, but versioning it uh, for the different releases. This is why we add uh, this functionality to, 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 to enable the versioning in the XBI taxonomy architecture. The same thing for the extensible animation item. 
as allowed value defined by a hierarchy can be changed from one list to another. So we would like to keep the same item name, but the allowed value, it can be changed from one list to another. Then if we just use this uh, uh, versioning um, mechanism to enable uh, this functionality. Mm, so this is a summary of the improvement on the glossary part. I already uh, explained during the presentation, so I would not repeat, but just to emphasize on the implicit improvement. Okay, so they are, for example, for to support a super category. Okay, uh, the uh, the, the, the super categories um, combination of, uh, of one of two or more categories. Okay, this cannot. Uh, this is already represented by, by architecture, but should notice that a super category uh, will have no members under under its uh, its folder because it's just to use the members from the other domains. But it can have uh, its own hierarchies. Okay, we will define the different hierarchies um, between the domain members of its composite domain. And regarding the default value, it can be it can be an, um, the default value, default members of 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 uh, any of its domains. And another implicit improvement is regarding the type domains. We have no such notion in the DPM refit. It is represented by the data type of the property of these dimensions. So what we need to do is just to define the naming conventions and define one data type domain for each type of the, the properties. Uh, the, the second part is the framework part. Uh, this is current uh, taxonomy architecture, and uh, the proposed the proposed one is just to remove several files that are not useful anymore. So you see from the screen that there's no new things, but only we only cross out uh, the folders and the files. For example, uh, we cross the code label because it's it's. It's, it's, it's not useful for, for the exchange. And it just, uh, as explained, uh, to present the, the ID, ID information in the, in the DPM uh, refit. Uh, we also cross out the normative, uh, normative, uh, normative folders under the frame, framework name. Uh, the, the normative um, folder, I think originally it is tried to give uh, some indication regarding the, uh, regarding the, the guidelines of this new framework, but uh, sometimes uh, it, it, it's, I don't think so that it is a good idea to present in the, in the folder. We can present the precise information uh, regarding guidelines, regarding the legal reference um, in, in, the, in the specified uh, folders for the, for the dictionary, but also for the different concepts as explained by Bartosz. So we will just remove it. And this legal reference information will just present later uh, in the file if, if it is necessary. And as a, we also remove the taxonomies for taxonomy information because we have no tax, taxonomy table in the DPM refit. And also the module just lived by themselves it has its own uh, life cycle, uh, depend not at all on the mm, on the taxonomy. So we will just remove these four information, the four files, and uh, we also would like to remove the um, uh, the relationship between the table group. Okay, because this file never referenced by any module, so this is not uh, useful at, at all. So we would like to remove it. And the last thing to remove is regarding the the assert assert files in the in the validation rules. Uh, assert files is is obsolete because. Uh, it it is not uh, originally. I think it is designed to uh, to define the preconditions to indicate the preconditions. But now it is already replaced by the find prac fires since long since almost the beginning. So so it's not useful. We will just uh, remove it to simplify the the text architecture. This is summary of the improvement already explained. 
uh, there are other changes uh, that we would like to to introduce is for example uh, to uh, create a centralized uh, model xsd in the euro filing taxonomy this model X already exists in the euro filing taxonomy but from eba and Europa side we we also um, you know create our own model xz in the in the past to to comply with our own, own requirements sometimes it's urgent so we would uh, for, so we would like also to um, try to integrate the contents of this uh, our own model uh, xd into the euro filing uh, model xd to centralize the elements definition and this can also help them i think the users to use use it directly the centralized fire directory uh, maybe also we will migrate the custom functions defined in our domain EBA and Yuba into the user filing domain. Next step, uh, we are creating the EBA Yuba architecture for XBI presentation of the DPM uh, document. Uh, now between between me and uh, and Bartosz uh, from Yuba, and uh, it will be soon finished. Um, and then it will be reviewed by by NCA and uh, by the public uh, in order to help the, the public to to better understand the, the, the architecture we are also trying to provide the examples of taxonomies under this uh, taxonomy architecture I hope that it can be out uh, this summer so you will also be able to consult this uh, the, 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 the taxonomies with this uh, new taxonomy architecture as well uh, soon. Regarding when to apply the new taxonomy architecture, so we think that uh, it is better to it is expect to uh, to apply it as soon as possible, um, because you, as explained, the changes is very limited and it is still under the scope of XDL international standards. So uh, just to move, uh, remove some files and add some folders. Uh, so we think that uh, it will not uh, really uh, impact too much on the reporting chains. Uh, and we think that it, uh, it can be applied. Uh, idea is it, it, it should be applied as soon as possible. But of course, it depends on uh, the feedback, feedback that we will receive from NCA and, uh, and public. We, of course, take that into consideration as well. But it should not be late than than the 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 application the you know the application the real application of the DPM refit because uh, the current DP text architecture is not compliant with the DPM refit anymore. Okay, so this is the presentation uh, from my side. Just maybe to introduce myself, I'm Aitor uh, I'm a um... AOPA expert on supervisory process, and now I am working in the European Banking Authority, especially for doing the project management of the DPM refit, um, the software tooling that is attached to it that is called LIDAR regulatory reporting. And today I will mainly brief about the, the timelines. I will take also on board a couple of questions. I think uh, there were relevant questions, and I'm happy that the uh, all attendees are, are raising the question. I think are very interesting as well. Uh, probably some that the, the topic is interesting. Um, maybe starting for trying to clarify something important in terms of the DPM refit um, and the scope. The DPM refit, what we are doing is a uh, evolution of the methodology. It's not a revolution. You see that uh, Bartos has presented that uh, it's an evolution of the data point model methodology. And what is very important to have in mind is that uh, we are speaking about specifications. There will be public specifications. There are, let's say, how the, the modeling scheme works. There is absolutely not software in it. It's just a specification in the same way that it was on the DPM 1.0. We are covering uh, currently some more use cases of formalizing some of the other aspects that maybe at the, uh, the DPM 1.0 was not there, like, for example, Antonio presented in terms of validation and transformation, trying to harmonize some to have a formal language. But in a nutshell, the DPM refit is just a specification. So in the same way that the DPM 1.0 was created by some experts on the time and so on and so forth, this DPM refit is similarly is a specification that is trying to, to promote harmonization and standardization, and that uh, is uh, aiming to be implemented by regulators, uh, software solutions, um, different actors in an open way and a free way. That's important to difference because there is another uh, aspect that is the software solution 
and it was has been impacted a little bit. Obviously, uh, in case of uh, AOPAN EPA, we have currently a specific software solution, which is based uh, in some internal developments. We have what we can AOPA we call the annotate templates, that probably are familiar, and the templates that are publicized, that we are converting from there to the DPM database, and then we are generating with the DPM architect uh, from Bank of Spain the taxonomies. EBA has some similar approach uh, where they are using a data access tool, entry tool, and they are creating models. And then from there, they are creating the DPM database and they are also uh, derivating the take field taxon. This is our solution, which is a different project. Today, we are not speaking about it because it is not, uh, we want to confuse us. So we are speaking about the specifications. This is our solution. is going to be the, the uh, the tool that uh, Yopa and EBA will, will use and are developing together. Maybe another seminar will tackle on more on it. Uh, the, the, um, uh, the software solution itself uh, was one of the questions that was uh, raised. Uh, is going to, I mean, at this stage, we are thinking to do it uh, freely available, at least uh, in terms of um, Availability for, for an interested party. We are not sure it will be open source or another type of distribution model, but we are still discussing this. We, we don't have there any decision. What is very important as well is to understand the, the difference between solutions and specification. The DPM refit will be a public specification, and there should be several software solutions implemented. There will be software solutions done by, by other regulators or solutions done by. by commercial entities, so it's uh, something that uh, is not restricting and the DPM refit should be used by, by several implementations. What we are trying to do is a single data dictionary. This will base, be based on having a common model, what was what we are presenting on in terms of uh, methodology. And also there will be a piece that today was not, uh, let's say, uh, addressed because it's one of the pieces that we will have in either states. That is how we synchronize uh, different repositories. And this will be just with, uh, again, specifications, just some kind of uh, uh, API or web service uh, definition where uh, regulators will be able to exchange the metadata across different repositories. And this together with the topic that uh, we have as a DPM refit of uh, governance and ownership should allow, allow to have a single dictionary with options to, to reuse and extend elements and create your own elements in terms of national competent authorities. So in introducing, I try to difference very much between the methodology, uh, the model, and the software solution. That was the what I was trying to, to be very clear in terms of the, um, of the separations of the, of the timelines and uh, concerns. Today, what I'm going to mainly brief is about the, the timelines from the deep and profit. I want to mention one very important aspect that uh, I'm sure there was specific questions, but the question on this, but uh, is the difference um, in the approach that we are going to take in terms of implementation. Heisen has just uh, in the last slot presented the the approach for the review of the case real taxonomy architecture, the architecture we are calling our file in architecture, which is actually in practical terms the common architecture from EOPA and EBA. And this architecture uh, is evolution again, it's evolution that we will need for the DPM refit. Uh, but uh, it's very, very important to, to state and to be clear uh, the, the new architecture is still being 100% conformance with existing specifications. This is the main artifact that is used for data sense. So we are going to stay with XBL standard. There will be XBL assertions. And this architecture is just, uh, as we understand, a small change or a small evolution. And it's, let's say, the, the core piece that is used for data sense. I know that there are several software providers, authorities, and CAs, um, different. Uh, stakeholders that are using the DPM database as a canonical source for, for internal system, for data chains. This, uh, obviously, there will be some change in terms of the DPM graphic. But in terms of the last mile of the XBRL, as I say, we are standing with the standard. It should have, it should allow us to transition. And I think it's important to reflect. Well, let's go with the, with the timelines in the DPM graphic. And now we are on the and of course, left to, to right. We are now on, on doing the first presentation, public error on neurofiling. We had before, a uh, few months ago, uh, at least two seminars with the competent authorities where we were actually doing a, a longer explanation on, on, the, on the model. 
And this one is the first time that I think we go publicly. We were thinking also to, to share with the different stakeholders what is the coming and also to, 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 to give you on, on the evolution of the change. This is today. The next thing that we are going to do and what we are aiming is to, to finalize the meta model uh, coming months, but uh, very particularly, uh, we should have the first documentation packets now by, by the summertime, where we are going to, to, to make uh, also available the packets. Uh, are more or less in what documents uh, explain all the all the main characteristics of the DPM refit. This is uh, to be served with the CAs and also public cert. We are also doing uh, the first migration of the of the models. Uh, this means that we are already working both in the EOPA and EVA current DPM metadata to to do migrations to the DPM refit. Uh, it is initially some kind of uh, automatic migration actually with a mapping. Understanding that uh, from the DPM 1.0, not all the DPM refits new uh, features are used. So we map that there will be things that uh, actually we are starting to say to use the new features uh, are not coming automatically out of the automatic migration, but uh, we need to do some, some work there. Uh, we will have also uh, meet them, let's say, uh, after the summer another technical seminar with the competent authorities. This will be very devoted to the DPM refit, uh, DPM, sorry, DPM experts. It will be an old training going very, very much on the test, the exercise and uh, use cases where we will consider very relevant or especially relevant to, relevant to explain how the DPM refit works and the new features. This is something coming in uh, uh, at the fall of the summer or, or beginning of the of the quarter four, this October, uh, and then I will have also the uh, public communication on uh, some kind of website with all the documentation that's from from also different of here. In parallel, we are doing, uh, as I say, this metadata migration. We are also going to, to work on the, on the migration of, of the SAS, and we are developing our our specific tooling for for our. Uh, Internal needs that I say that it will be also served uh, with externals, but uh, the, the goal is to replace our current software solutions. Uh, this will go uh, in parallel. We estimate that more or less we should have by March next year something like this. This, this first that we call minimum viable product, we know the fancy solution, but the, the solution that they enable to, to replace the current one and to start to, to generate the new DPM. And refit uh, at least uh, the transitional period, the DPM refit models. And then we expect that by April we'll have a full text generation with all the aspects uh, apply. And then we will start with the first publications. This is still to be a little bit uh, defined in terms of uh, how it's going to be the phase. We will have actually we have two different authorities. We may have small uh, different timelines, uh, but uh, definitely we will go both authorities with all the, the long term with all the packets, and we will go with with uh, this uh, new DPM refit. Moreover, I think it's also important, as I said at the beginning, there will be this XVRL change, which is, will still be in an evolution, fully conformance with the current XVRL specifications. And it's part also of the technical review where we may apply uh, some new XVRL packets because uh, each authority, uh, we are trying to align and we are aligning, but uh, there are new specifications that uh, we are currently not uh, implemented, like the uh, dynamic uh, severity specification for for these formulas that uh, we try to, to implement. There is also the extensive enumeration that we want to, to, to implement on XPL. There will be this aspects uh, evolution, but it's still being fully compliant with the XPL uh, standard. There will be also, and I think it's uh, very important to, to, to state, we will populate also not only the DPM refit database, but we are also uh, trying to do uh, what we call a upgrade from DPM refit to DPM 1.0. You know that we are in a position to publish at least for, for some years and also for the trackability of the history. We are also aiming to, to publish the, the, the DPM 1.0 uh, on top of the DPM refit uh, database. And this was my, my presentation for today.